And meanwhile, they're looking towards the 2014 midterms, and lo and behold, today he announces he's going to nominate Max Baucus. It was reported yesterday. Max Baucus to be our new ambassador to China. Uh, Baucus's allies in, in the Senate say he's got a lot of experience working on trade issues with China, but he certainly has no no foreign policy experience that any of us have been able to determine. Right, and there and is some criticism of this from even from the foreign policy community, even from within the State Department and other places. Trade issues are big. The economic relationship is huge with China, so maybe he has insight into that. You made the suggestion earlier that he knows Congress uh, well, and maybe China seeks that out as well. But you know, our security issues in that part of the world are, are uh, quite serious. Enormous. And you know, the fact that Bacchus doesn't have that ba background, I think, is curious. I think the choices that they've made um, in China, going back to John Huntsman as well. Gary Locke uh, was, was uh, more well received, but they've been kind of curious choices by this president. But he's also thinking about politics in 2014. Mary Landrieu, can, who's up for tough re-election, can get on the Energy Committee and, you know, they're Ron looking White defensively. Ron Wyden moves up to the Finance yeah. Committee chair. And every meanwhile, the governor like in Montana <laughs> can appoint... You just made every case but the Murrays. The lieutenant the governor in Montana is running, and he's running as an underdog, so now the Democratic lieutenant governor in Montana can be appointed to the Senate, get a leg up and get some experience. Is it better to be an incumbent in 2014? Well, that's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think all the arguments you made have been all over the place. They make perfect sense in terms of the Rubik's Cube part of the thing. But as for him, he hasn't been a loyalist to Obama. He's been a guy who's been, he didn't do a great job as finance chair in getting together a bipartisan, at least a semblance of a bipartisan approach to health care, which was his big goal in life. Didn't do it. We lost Enzi. We lost Arn Hatch. Remember all that? There was a hope there. And a lot of it, of course, you means you're talking back in 2009 yeah, when the finance to try to put committee together was something on. that was a real grown up approach to health care instead of a partisan Foreign policy level. Yes. Senator Max Baca seems an odd choice for America's next ambassador to China. The Montana Democrat does not speak Chinese. While he knows about trade issues, Baucus is not known for a history of ties to the country. According to the Wall Street Journal, China's citizens are taking to their version of Twitter to voice concern over how the 72-year-old will fare in the notoriously thick Beijing air. One post quoted by the journal reads, So old, don't die in the Beijing smog. But if you fan away the smog and look at this assignment through the lens of politics, and Democrats wanting to keep control of the Senate in the 2014 midterms, well, then sending Baucus to China makes perfect sense. Here's how many in the Senate think this game of musical chairs may play out inside the rotunda. The six-term lawmaker has already announced he's retiring from the Senate, leaving his seat up for grabs to Republicans in the next election. Being sent to China means the Democratic governor of Montana could appoint a fellow Democrat to fill the seat temporarily, making that Democrat an incumbent, which provides a big leg up for 2014 in terms of fundraising, name recognition, and power. Baucus is also the chair of the powerful Finance Committee. When he leaves, Democrat Ron Wyden of Oregon could take his place, and that would leave Wyden's position as chairman of the Senate Energy Committee open, possibly helping another Democrat in 2014. If the Energy Committee chairmanship is filled by vulnerable Louisiana Democrat Mary Landrieu, that could also help the Democrats in the midterms. Landrew, as Energy Committee chairwoman, would likely see big oil and gas turn on the spigot of campaign cash for her Senate run next year. So when it all shakes out, sending one Democrat to the other side of the planet could be seen as a way to preserve two more Democrats in Washington, D.C.